In the last video, we covered everything from Australia being Iraq to Victor Crone on the toilet. And poor Jay, who is sat back there, is still editing it as I film this video. Today, we're going to do the second half of the iceberg. That is tiers 6 through to tier 10. Now, there's 110 items there, so we best get on with it. Before we do that, the usual, you need to follow me on social media, so Twitter, Instagram, we have a Patreon. You can subscribe to that if you like and get videos the day early. Poor Jay has been working very hard on this video, so you should probably follow him on Twitter as well. <laughs> Now we're through with that, let's get on with the video. So, picking up where we left off, tier six. First item, fake Croatian junior Eurovision account. This was a fake account that was created under the name ESC Croatia, and it announced that Croatia would participate in junior Eurovision 2022. But in the end, they didn't. It did deceive some fan press though. Brussels EU bid. The Guardian newspaper, that's a British newspaper, reported that the EU was weighing up asking the EBU if it could be hosted in Brussels this year, obviously with Ukraine unable to host. Shockingly, it came to nothing and the British media had made something up. Carol McGee influences 2023 voting. Carol McGee is a legend among Eurovision fans for this tweet where she says she is not happy because her gay grandson liked upbeat female vocal pop songs and neither Albania, Ireland or the goth lady from Austria have made it through. We miss you, Pia Maria, even if we don't believe that you're real. Yo, what's up, guys? I'm Lumix. Anyway, I can't see the link to 2023 here, but Carol got her wish this year, where two of the three top three songs were pop songs sung by a female lead. So congratulations, Carol. However, she's had a bit of a weird year in the meantime, where she accused Andrew from Love Island of stealing her daughter's handbag in Sainsbury's. North Macedonia flag incident withdrawal. This is another really stupid conspiracy theory. Some of you may remember in 2022, the North Macedonian participant, Andrea, got in a little bit of hot water after she gently threw a flag of the country to one side during a photo shoot. This was seen as a great evil act in North Macedonia and people were very upset to the fact that the broadcaster was reportedly considering withdrawing before the final. After that, for 2023, they actually did withdraw and they didn't participate in Liverpool. However, it had nothing to do with the flag throwing incident. It's literally just because they ran out of money. Sadly, 2024 has still not seen a return for them, but maybe we'll see them back in 2025. The Dilecta effect. This refers to Chanel Dilecta, who was Italy's junior Eurovision participant last year with her song, blah, blah, blah. What most people remember about this is the fact that she, for some reason, had a graphic on screen that was saying no to bullism. That aside, We've since seen two more songs appear in the Eurovision-related world with the same name. Firstly, we have Blah 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 by Moniskin, which is on their absolutely terrible album Rush. Got two out of ten from uh, Pitchfork, that did. And secondly, as Alidida's entry in Romania's national final this year. Personally, I think neither of them stand up to the original and its anti-bullism message, but that is maybe just me. Forci Vidbeer backing vocals. Vidbeer always finds a way to be chaotic somehow. There's always a soap opera. Think back to Alina Pash being disqualified because she illegally entered Crimea, or the entire thing being canceled and Ukraine withdrawing from the contest because Marov and then every other single act in the national final refusing to sign the contract that the broadcaster put in front of them after the show. Now, this specifically refers to Kruch, who came second in that show this year, um, claiming that the main vocal track of Heart of Steel by Torchy um, was present on the backing track they were using during the national final. This would obviously be against the rules. Whatever the truth of this claim or not, it didn't come to fruition and Torchy went to Eurovision. We're going to be hearing more about both Kruch and Tvorchi later in this video, so stick around. Elsa returns FIK trophy. Another thanks to our Albanian correspondent, Yera, for this one, who has helped me with about 10 of these entries, which there were only sources in Albanian and I couldn't translate them myself. This one is the rumor that Elsa Leela, and you're gonna see plenty of her in this video, was so unhappy that she had won FIK but not gone to Eurovision because she hadn't won the televote that she had refused to accept the trophy. Now, this rumor was not true. There are photos on her Instagram that show her and her daughter 
and her song, Evita, was written for her daughter. There's pictures of them together holding the trophy. So, a happy ending for Elsa. Let's hope she's not, for example, I don't know, involved in any kind of criminal enterprise in Italy. Umami Tsunami name. So, Umami Tsunami was the name of one of the acts in the final of Melody Grand Prix this year in Norway. Some shrewd Twitter users and Reddit users spotted that that is a band name that was suggested on the band name suggestions Reddit two years ago. So whoever did that then, I imagine was feeling very pleased when somebody actually took them up on their suggestion. Minimal wind applies to the wrong email. Picture the scene. You've written your song for Eurovision. You are so excited to send it to the broadcaster, hoping that you'll get through and you'll be able to share it with the world except you send it to the wrong email address. That is exactly what happened to Estonian band Minimal Wind. And as a result, they were not in SD Lowell in 2023. They're not on the shortlist for 2024 either. So let's presume they haven't found the email. <laughs> What is, is the best Estonian turbo folk I have ever heard. Moving on. Antonia Kauri, this is her song on live TV. Last time we talked about this Greek selection battle, there was the legal action and there was uh, Melissa Mantzoukas giving a masterclass on how to make sure you never, ever, ever get selected ever to represent your country at Eurovision. Amongst that selection battle, there was actually a third song by singer Antonia Kauri except when she went on TV to discuss the controversy after she had withdrawn, she said that her song did not have a fresh sound and was not suitable to represent Greece at Eurovision. I don't know about you, but you probably need to back yourself first. Like if you wanna do well at Eurovision, if you don't believe in yourself, I feel like nobody else is really going to. Anyway, motivational speech over. Let's just move on to the next one. Paria copies Electric Callboy. Every good Eurovision song has at least one plagiarism scandal. And I'm gonna talk about Lorene's one here as well because it should be on this iceberg and it isn't. Basically, Cha 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 was compared to the song We Got The Moves by Electric Callboy. I can see it here. But I just, I don't think that their similarities really go beyond this bit. Cha 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 does a lot of different things, whereas the whole Electric Callboy song is a bit like this. So I think this is maybe people with a bit of an agenda. As for Loreen, she was compared to the song Piano by Micka Newton. Similar thing. It's got that similar motif, but like they're different songs. So let's just throw these ones in the trash where they belong. Eurosong giving out cash. Last time we covered the Irish Eurosong peanut butter giveaway. Yes, Gaga, you look so good. And it should also be mentioned, they gave out 50 euro vouchers to Tesco's, which is a supermarket. So congratulations to everyone in the Eurosong audience who got their next shop for milk and eggs for free, I guess. Rosa Chemical do on stage. Firstly, it wasn't a do it was a vi so secondly, we can only show you this blurred out image of it. Rosa Chemical finished their performance during San Remo and shouted, long live sex, long live love, long live freedom. Rosa ended up eight. So whatever they did in this performance, clearly it worked. Romanian results reveal chaos. The Romanian national final had some unique qualities to it this year. They invited the top five on stage before revealing the results. And it turned out the order they invited them on stage was also the order they finished in. Dora did something similar, but if you wanna find about that, you'll have to go watch the first video again. They also repeatedly called Aladeda Adelaida, which I imagine as an artist would probably annoy me a bit. Melissa Mantzoukis versus ERT. We already talked about this in the last video. Go watch that if you want to hear about it. Poe Museum power outage. In Richmond, Virginia, there is a museum about Edgar Allan Poe and they had a power outage and tweeted about it. Obviously, Eurovision fans and the official Eurovision account immediately uh, found it and descended on it. FDC voting sequence. So we're talking about Portugal. Thank you so much to Euro Bruno, Mr. Stats on Twitter and the only Euro fan to have ever changed the actual result of Eurovision for helping me with this one. There was an error during the televote reveal for the Portuguese national selection this year. They announced that Inas Apenas had received one point from the televote only for the screen to give it to Ai Curaçao. This caused some consternation as Ai Curaçao was the big fan favorite. And they had to faff about with it for 30 seconds, but they then fixed it. Ai Curaçao actually got 12 from the televote just as it did from the jury and off she went to Eurovision. Lord of the Lost meets King Charles. During King Charles' visit to Germany at the beginning of the year, he was given a musical performance by none other than Germany's act for 2023, Lord of the Lost, which gave us these wonderfully bizarre photos of the king shaking hands with them. Carrier runs for mayor. April Fool's Day, as a prank, the city of Vantar announced 
that Caria would be running for mayor to replace the outgoing incumbent. It was a wind up, but I imagine a few people probably fell for it. Hashtag we will get wild youth to qualify for the grand final of Eurovision 2023 because we like that song actually. There was a previous hashtag along the same lines related to Leslie Roy. Irish Eurofans brought it back this year and spread it all around Twitter about wild youth. It should be said that it was definitely ironic because there is very little love for wild youth among Irish Eurofans. Peaked Jacks, Lord of the Lost and Joker Out condoms. Adding to the long list of bizarre Eurovision related merch over the year. Peak Jacks and Joker Out came out with their own lines of condoms and a Lord of the Lost themed plaque was spotted on the merch table at one of their shows. Robot Lorene at the pre-party in Barcelona. At the end of her performance, Lorene decides to thank her fans, as any artist would, except it sounded a little suspicious. Thank you! I love you! The microphone had had auto-tune applied to it. We don't know if she asked for it, we don't know who was behind it, whether it was her team, whether it was the organizers, we don't know if other artists were offered the same thing. But this is a mystery that will probably remain unsolved. Sudden Light's luggage. Sudden Light's, unfortunately, their luggage was lost on the way to Liverpool, meaning they had to do their first rehearsal in their street clothes. They eventually came 11th. They missed out on the final by a few points. And I know for a lot of people on my timeline, this is still a sensitive subject. So I am sorry for reminding you. May second rehearsal. May Muller, the UK act, in her second rehearsal, there was this mysterious male voice that appeared on the footage. Instead, I wrote a song. It was uploaded to the Eurovision YouTube channel only for the broadcaster, the BBC and May to complain and say, wait, when we were shown the rehearsal footage after our rehearsal, this wasn't present. It was eventually reposted and it's a mystery as to how it happened to this day. Lazara slap. Just to be clear, Lazara did not slap anyone. A German TV host during an interview asked her to slap him. And to be fair to her, she did. She played along. She was like, how much money do you have? And then she looked at his wallet and she said, yeah, no, you don't have enough. So actually, Credit to her for having a sense of humor about this one. Turner Pill attack, nothing to joke about here. As Tvorchi took to the stage, Russia bombed their hometown in timing that was awfully convenient and most likely intentional. There's not much we can say here other than f Russia. SD Lowell number of qualifiers. After the semi-finals of SD Lowell, some confused fans realized that despite the rule book saying there were 12 entrants in the final, only five had been qualified from each semi. As it turned out, there were two more songs coming. They just put them through as wild cards. So this one was less confusing than everyone thought it was. On to tier seven. First up, Temba Blanche versus Spanish fans. Thanks to Gotham for the help with this one. Basically, Temba Blanche, a Ukrainian artist, they cracked some jokes about Spanish fans in an interview and said that, oh, we would have got hate from them if we had won Vidbeer. The Spanish fans found the interview and immediately proved their point. So I guess they were right. Israel conscripts artists into Eurovision. I'm fed up of talking about Israel controversies. I've had enough. Jay, Jay, your, your ESC game now, you do it. No, come on. No, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. What the hell? Your ESC game I am now. not ESC game. Israel conscripts artists into ESC. Israel drop a list of 78 names. Hey, 87 of you. Anyway, hey all 84 of you. And they made a choice without telling any of the artists. Mia Nikolai hates the Netherlands. There was a YouTube video out there where Mia Nikolai says she doesn't really feel like she belongs in Amsterdam or the Netherlands and she'd rather live in New York. Some crazy fans have even gone as far as saying that she hates the Netherlands, which just isn't true. Four euro national final tickets. Albania's national final tickets only cost four euros, which is a steal. Albina family values hypocrisy. Albina was slammed in Albanian media for singing about family values despite her boyfriend having two children. Quite rightly, Albina dismissed these criticisms. Belgian national final, this is Azerbaijan's voting. This title's kind of inaccurate. During one of the shows to introduce the Eurosong acts, Hunter Falls tells the story of Azerbaijan interrogating everyone who voted for Armenia in Eurovision 2009. This isn't a diss, it's a fact that Azerbaijan did this. Renella attacks Gala Drago. Thank you again, Yera, for explaining this one to us. After Renella won Fick in 2022, 
Robert Aliage expressed his displeasure publicly on Albanian TV. Then the next year, when Gala did not win Belgian Euro song, Ronella responded on Instagram by saying, Karma is scary, but wonderful. A little man last year, without knowing me at all, didn't leave anything filthy and terrible unsaid. For a young woman who won a prize yesterday, God dealt with it himself. Do good to find good. Ronella later said the story wasn't just about her, but also the other journalists that were rude about her. Nikki Nikki's Eurosong voting, Nikki Tutorials on YouTube, was a juror at Eurosong and gave Gustav 12 points because she liked the performance. Not really sure why this is in tier seven. Made in Italy OnlyFans cover. Rosa Chemical's San Remo entry this year, Made in Italy, has an uncensored version which is only viewable on OnlyFans. For obvious reasons, I can't show you here, but low key. No, 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 let stop, just, no, Jay, no, let no, me just, Jay, no, let no, me Jay, just. Jay, no! Okay, Jay has been relegated back to editing hell because you cannot show OnlyFans on YouTube. Anyway, moving swiftly on, Azerbaijan fake shortlist. We covered this one in the first video. It was the drama with the songwriter who said that the Azeri national final was rigged, except the band that he said it was rigged for literally wasn't the entry, so... Yeah. Leo Gassman gets disassociated by his stylist. Slightly badly worded this one, but essentially Leo Gassman finished 18th in San Remo, but not before wearing a tank top during one of his performances that was apparently so offensive to his stylist that it required an Instagram story from the stylist disassociating themselves from it. it seems like a little bit of an overreaction, but then again, it is San Remo. And as we know, the Italians take it very, very seriously. Windows sounds in Romania stream among the many, many, many messes of Selectia Nazionale in Romania. One of them was the fact you could literally hear Windows sounds during the stream for the show. Professional as always, Romania, well done. Selectia Nazionale lottery. While we're on the subject of bizarre things from Selectia Nazionale, there was a lottery whereby everyone who voted was automatically entered into a competition to win a 5,000 euro prize. They then really struggled to get in contact with people to tell them that they had won. They read out full names and email addresses on live television, which is a bit of a data breach. And when they finally got through to someone, they asked them a question live on air and they didn't know the answer. They were asked another question and they got wrong again and then they just gave them the prize anyway. This, to be honest, was about in line with the quality of what I expected from Selectia Nacionala this year. So it isn't all that surprising. UVPSM's lyrics on paper. Again, this is the San Marino National Final. During Flex, yes, that really is the name they chose for themselves. During their performance, there was a man on stage holding A3 sheets of paper with the lyrics printed on them, showing them to the camera. I guess the message of the song was just that important. Naked person at UVPSM, staying firmly in San Marino during a piece to camera, advertising the retail park, the San Marino outlet experience. Never been personally. A man is visible in the background, completely naked. Tvorchi Kenya promotion. Now I actually think this one is really cool. Basically, after they were selected, Tvorchi went to Kenya. They unveiled a mural in the center of Nairobi. They performed and 30% of the Ukrainian diaspora in Kenya showed up. They got involved with some Ukrainian Kenyan cultural exchange initiatives. Jan Smit leaves selection committee. Jan Smit, according to reports, was the only member of the Dutch selection committee that opposed Mia and Dion's selection. He'd left the committee altogether less than a month before Eurovision, but after the now infamous poor pre-party performances of Mia and Dion. The conspiracy theory is that he'd seen how it was going and jumped, you know, rats leaving the sinking ship kind of thing. In reality, Smith said that it was simply time to pass on the baton after 10 years. This is pretty believable, but at the same time, the timing is just a bit off. King Charles misses the button. King Charles came to Liverpool to press the button to turn on the Eurovision stage for the first time, except he missed the button. We pay 86.3 million pounds a year as British taxpayers for this man to not even be able to press a button. Remy Raclette. During rehearsals, Remo Forer revealed that if he had a drag personality, his name would be Remy Raclette, which in my opinion is an absolutely terrible drag name. Do you have a drag name? I do, yeah. What would it be? 
Gabe Horn. <laughs> Broadcasters released their own rehearsal footage after the organizers went to very great lengths to ensure that no rehearsal footage got out whatsoever. A few broadcasters just kind of did it anyway. So for example, the German broadcaster put 30 seconds of Lord of the Lost second rehearsal on their Twitter feed. BBC mistakes fan for Carrier. The BBC interviewed a man on the street believing him to be Carrier. The man was not Carrier. Hiroshima's Dreams. This was the name of a song that didn't make it out of the semi-finals of Una Voce per San Marino. What I want to know is, who thought Hiroshima's Dreams was a good name for a song? Bart Kanetz in underwear. Bart Kanetz is a Belgian TV host, stand-up comedian, and this year he gave the points, the jury points for Belgium during the contest. He promised to do this in boxer shorts, which he duly delivered on. Bristol's £70 bid Fail. Bristol tried to host Eurovision and the council's budget revealed they spent £70.42 on trying to do so. That was £50 on making a video and £20.42 on travel expenses. They did not make it onto the shortlist. Jamala orders McDonald's during Vidbeer. Thanks again to Gotham for the help with this one. After the war started, it was a really big thing when McDonald's reopened in Ukraine and a lot of Ukrainians were really excited. There were queues on the day when it opened. To sort of pay tribute to this, Jamala herself ordered McDonald's during Vidbeer. Serbia spoils host city. I gotta be honest, I have absolutely no idea about this one. Petunia wants to bomb PIN. PIN is the Lithuanian national final. The singer Petunia in December of 2022 posted on Instagram that she was manifesting for bombing 2023. An interesting sentiment, but she then went on to participate in PIN and she finished fourth, which is pretty good. And she did not bomb anyone. Alina Pash supports Tvorci, Kalush supports Kruitz. Basically, Alina Pash and Kalush, who of course came first and second in Vidbeer in 2022, both took to Instagram stories to express who they wanted to succeed them in 2023. Kalush came out for Kruc and Alina Pash came out for Torchi. It's funny that Kalush, after kicking up a massive stink in 2022, after coming second and throwing all kinds of allegations around, supported Kruc, who went on to do exactly the same thing in 2023. Unlike Kalush, Kruc did not make it to Eurovision and they certainly didn't win the contest. Belgian national final broadcast in Spain. There is a television network in Spain, TEN, that actually quite regularly broadcasts national finals. They broadcast the Finnish national selection, UMK. They broadcast Esti Lau from Estonia. They even broadcast Una Voce per San Marino. For some reason, the fact they broadcast Eurosong is what made it onto this iceberg. I don't know why either. Squeeze Paradise is from 2012. National final season isn't complete without someone getting disqualified. And this time it was the song Squeeze Paradise that was entered into the Moldovan selection. It was disqualified after it was revealed that a version of the song had been uploaded to YouTube more than a decade ago in 2012. I don't know why artists keep doing this because there is a controversy about this every year. It's like, do you not think people are going to find out? Anyway, let's move on. Serbia tried to disqualify Albania. I have to thank Yera again, our Albanian correspondent, for helping with this one. There was some controversy after Albina and her family won the national final in Albania. It centered around the fact that she's from Kosovo, which news outlet Allo in uh, Serbia baselessly claimed meant that they shouldn't have been able to participate. They were angry that people from Kosovo had voted and they had a problem with the fact that Albina was singing about Kosovo. Personally, I can think of a few political reasons why a Serbian news outlet might want to find reasons to say that Albania and the Albanian act is bad, but let's leave the politics on that there and just move on before we cause a fight in the comments. Fake UVPSM artist announcement. We're back in San Marino. Basically, a Twitter account was created, was made to look legitimate because it had a blue tick. Thanks, Elon. They were making fake artist announcements. It got enough traction that the broadcaster actually had to come out and deny that they were real. Let three want to have group sex with Joker out. This one is kind of self-explanatory. In an interview with Croatian media, Let3 expressed their wish to stick carnations up our asses or have some group sex with Joker out. Now, I've seen the kinds of things that Joker out stands tweet about those boys. So quite frankly, I don't think Let3 are alone in this, but the amount of bleeps that Jay is gonna have to put in this section to stop this video from being demonetized is ridiculous. Toad scream. I got a power! Lorene tax fraud. Lorene was registered in Sweden at the incorrect address and was being investigated 
by the tax office for this reason. They sent her a bunch of letters. She didn't reply. They got grumpy, but she hasn't been arrested and charged with fraud. So I'm going to presume they sorted it out. Riley's real age. Yassified Barbara Pravi himself, Riley. Yeah! Denmark's act this year had some confusion about what his real age was. It turns out he's actually 25, despite the fact he looks about 12. This was discovered after someone found a Facebook post from a Faroese driving school that had his date of birth visible in it. There is a long Reddit post on how Eurofans essentially became private detectives to find this one out. So please go read that later, but not now because you've got to watch the rest of the video first. But no one will sit on you. This is a Lazara tweet. This Eurofan fake account, as has now been proven, tweeted some things insinuating that Lazara was fat. Lazara herself actually responded to it with her now infamous no one will sit on you tweet. Connor and Boyan kiss at pre-party ES. This is a video that allegedly shows Connor from Wild Youth and Boyan from Joker Out kissing each other at pre-party ES. The footage is unclear, but we do know they get on very well since allegedly Connor is now Joker Out's manager. Duncan ditches Mir and Dion. When Mir and Dion from the Netherlands were having their toughest time, their pre-party performances were really not in tune. It was not going well. Dutch media focused in on the fact that their mentor, Duncan Lawrence, had hadn't said a thing publicly in support. After this, Duncan did postpone his album in order to focus his efforts on Mia and Dion, but they were ultimately not successful and they came 14th in the semi-final. Finnish Prime Minister is a cha-cha-cha backing dancer. The former Prime Minister of Finland, Alexander Stubb, posted a tweet highlighting how similar he looks to Matti, who is one of Karia's backing dancers. Obviously, we should emphasize the Former Prime Minister of Finland was not actually one of Karia's backing dancers, but I did actually believe this one for a few hours, so shame on me. Tural OnlyFans, a Eurofan stalking Tural from Azerbaijan's personal Facebook account. Actually, no, wait, let's talk about this a minute. Do not do this. Do, why would you go on an artist's personal social media? Like, let them have a life, leave them alone. A Facebook page is their business and their business alone. Anyway, in 2020, he posted a link to a YouTube video, which was allegedly a tutorial on how to get Eurofans premium account stuff for free. This was probably a hack, but we don't really know. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Luke Black Tomb Raider levels. It turns out that Serbian participant Luke Black had made some levels for the game Tomb Raider way back in 2009. And a guy called Steve actually played a bunch of these levels during a Twitch live stream. Unfortunately, I cannot find the highlights for this. So I really hope they exist somewhere. Marcus Riva missing draw. I don't actually know what this is referring to, but basically Marcus Riva is a Latvian singer. He has tried to represent Latvia at Eurovision nine times and failed every time. This will probably not be the last time we see him, so I would expect him to be on the iceberg next year as well. Moldova Raw sponsorship. Raw Boost is an energy drink that is available in Moldova and they were advertised during the national selection. I've never tried Raw Boost, but now I am kind of curious. So if anyone ever gets hold of one of these, you know, let me know because I would like to have it. What could possibly go wrong? We are on to tier nine. So we have two tiers left to go. First up, we have Russia accuses Ukraine of masking racism. I don't know what this one refers to, but it has been a consistent theme of Russia baselessly accusing Ukraine and Ukrainians of being racist. All I'm gonna say is they should probably take a look at themselves and move on. Tvorchi cover art swastika. This is another bizarre conspiracy. Essentially, a Twitter Euro fan said that this cover art for Heart of Steel kind of looks like a swastika. I'm gonna pull my privilege on this issue as a Jewish person and tell you this does not look like a swastika. This is a silly conspiracy, let's move on. Discord user gets PIN song disqualified. Lena Stalita's song for P-I-N, was disqualified after it was discovered that it was uploaded initially in 2020 to YouTube. It was discovered, presumably, by a Discord user. This isn't quite 2012 Squeeze Paradise levels, but it's still a nice disqualification. Everyone knows we have to have a few every year. It's not the same without them. Elsa Leela Gala Night Backlash. Again, I have to thank Yera for this one, who has done so much work for this video. Elsa Leela, alongside the popular Kosovar rapper Capital T, sung a version of a popular Albanian song 
on the third night of FIK. The song, which was Puez Loten, is originally by a guy called Valentin Velzi, and he was very, very unhappy with the version that these two produced. I invite you to join me in a dramatic reading of what he said. Whoever put filth on my song not only doesn't have the professional ability to refresh the song, but didn't even have basic decency to contact me about author rights. You can re-sing a song, but you have no right to change and denigrate said song without the author's permission. Let me say this straight to Elsa Leela and capital T. The model of the song that you brought is an example of how you can denigrate and disfigure a song so beautiful like Puez Lodin. And this is why I would like to ask RTSH, that's the Albanian broadcaster, to please remove this ugly version from every broadcasting service. So you could say he was not very happy. Trisha Paytas for Israel. Trisha Paytas is an internet personality. She's one of those people where everything you know about her, you've learned involuntarily. At least that's how it is for me. She released a song in 2021 called I Love You Moses. And then in 2022, tweeted at the Israeli broadcaster saying, for your consideration. Now, apparently according to Twitter, her baby is the reincarnation of Queen Elizabeth. So maybe they should have gone for it. Andrea D threatens to sue Twitter users. Andrea D with her song Perinita Mea came second in the Romanian national final. She was very upset when she saw allegations comparing it to something else that will come on into a minute. She threatened to sue in a tweet, but that was later deleted. Thank you very much to one of the original Twitter users involved in this dispute. Who the hell is Disco? They're on screen now for helping me out with this one. UVPSM Interval Act picked up from hotel lobby. I'm struggling a little bit to find the media on this one, but the backstory is essentially the hotel in which all of the jurors for the Samaranese national final were staying. There was a young boy singing in the foyer and the jurors were so impressed that they invited him to be the interval act at the national selection. I can't find a video of this because as far as I can tell, the full show is not available anywhere. But if I find a video of this or Jay finds a video of this, before we release the video, it will appear now. Aww. Blanca's fake followers. A Twitter user looked at Blanca from Poland's Instagram followers only to reveal that a large number of them were very, very clearly fake. It bore all of the hallmarks of a follower buying service. Israel Calling memorizes Duye lyrics. For whatever reason, the crowd at Israel Calling absolutely loved Albina and Familia Kelmendi. It culminated in, after her performance, she started singing the song again, a cappella, and the whole audience knew the lyrics. Now, personally, my Albanian, as we've learned in this video, is not very good, but there we go. Pasha Carsale. Somehow, Pasha from Moldova managed to convince the official Eurovision account to post a video of him advertising his old Toyota for sale. He wanted to sell it to help fund his performance. In any case, it was worth it because they did great. Victor Vernikos nepotism. After Greece's first rehearsal, it was reported back by Greek Eurofans on Twitter and on Reddit that debate had exploded in the Greek news about the nepotism behind Victor's selection. Victor's family includes politicians, ship owners, and artists. And the allegation is that it's because of those connections that he was selected rather than his musical talent. All I can say about this is Victor was 16 at the time of his performance. If he has benefited from this, it's hardly going to be his fault anyway. And I think we should maybe just lay off him a little bit and focus our blame on the system that selected him rather than on Victor himself. SD Lowell greenwashed postcards. There was a bit of controversy in Estonia after it was revealed that the city of Tallinn had paid 60,000 euros to have the postcards at SD Lowell, those are the little audiovisual things that we get just before the performances, they'd paid for them to promote their campaign as the European green capital of 2023. To be honest, I don't really understand why this is controversial. Like, remember Eurovision 2012? All the postcards were literally just Azerbaijan tourist ads. So this one, a bit overblown. Unicorn lyrics. There is a conspiracy theory, I'll let you be the judge of whether it is true or not, that the lyrics of Unicorn by Noah Carell have some hidden subtext. Now let's just take a look at a few examples and we'll decide whether you think this one has legs or not. So do you want to check my DNA? We can write a new book. 
and I'm going to stand out here like a unicorn on my own. These are some of the lines from the song. Let's focus in on that last one for a second. That last one, I think, is a good example of how we can sort of illustrate this easily. The suggestion is there that, oh, I'm going to stand here out like a unicorn. It's that Israel is a unicorn among Middle Eastern countries, that it's special in some way and compared to those other countries. People argue that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. It's the only country with good rights for LGBT people. Now, this is a process known as pinkwashing, whereby people point to this in order to distract from other actions of the state of Israel. I'm not going to provide any political comment on that. I'm just bringing this up as context to say this is what people were accusing this song of doing in this line. I'll let you be the judge of it. You can go back and read the lyrics yourself, but I'm going to stop now before I cause an absolutely massive argument in the comments. That's not what I want. We've made it this far. You are like one hour, 45 minutes through a two part, two hour video. Don't blow it now. Stay calm. We're nearly there. Azara Stormout, slightly more lighthearted now. At the split screen at the end of Eurovision, when you had Finland and Sweden, on screen next to each other. The cameras captured Lazara supposedly storming out in the background. It was later revealed she wasn't actually storming out. She just really, really needed the toilet. It was unfortunately an inopportune moment to go. Personally, I relate, we've all been there. And tier 10, the final tier on this iceberg. If you've made it this far, please make sure you've liked and subscribed to the channel. We've got a lot more coming soon as the 2024 season gets into full swing. Without further ado, Let's get down to the final set. Elsa Leela songwriter accuses Albina of bribing. Firstly, it wasn't the songwriter, it was Elsa Leela's conductor who claimed that Albina and her family had paid 5,000 euros to bring additional microphones for her whole family to the show. They claimed that they'd essentially bust a bunch of people in from their hometown in Kosovo to come and vote for them and that a local Vodafone store was giving out free SIM cards to people who showed a ticket to the final of the Albanian national selection. Now, they, this allegation essentially says that they bust these people in, they got these free SIM cards, they went to the show and broke a whole bunch of competition rule, rules by being really loud and partisan, and then they used these SIM cards to send loads of votes in for Albina and make her win the televote and go to Eurovision. This one is a bit of a stretch, but again, I will let you be the judge. Filipino tattoo staging. There's a clip from the uh, Filipino show Showtime, which was aired in April 2023, which very, very obviously plagiarizes the staging of Tattoo by Lorene. Interestingly, this isn't actually the first time this or something similar has happened. In the Philippines and in Indonesia, there is a bit of a history of ripping off Eurovision stages. It's happened on at least three occasions before. I'll show those on screen. Like, they're not very subtle ripoffs. Florian Vida, who's the one of the stage designers behind some of these stages, actually knows about it, but there's not so much he can do, and he's not really that bothered about it. Paranator Mayer copies Rabid's game song. Remember earlier when I was talking about a Romanian artist suing someone? Yeah, this was why. So I'm not going to provide any commentary in case I get sued, and instead just play you a sample of Paranator Mayer. <laughs> and a sample of a song from the soundtrack of the game, Rabbids. For legal reasons, I can't comment any further. Sasha copyright claims haters. Sasha is one of the weirdest men in Europe. His past song titles are so obscene, I cannot even say them here because the video will be demonetized. He has just released his latest effort, Married to Twins. That should give you an idea of the kind of guy he is. His entry into the Moldovan national selection last year was terrible, and somebody made a video criticizing him. He then copyright claimed the video and got it taken down. Sasha, if you're watching this, Please don't remove this video. This is like one minute out of 60 and I haven't played your song, so I will appeal it and I will win. German CDU sponsors national final song. A staff member at the CDU, that is a political party in Germany. You might know them because Angela Merkel, who used to be the chancellor, she was their leader. An employee of the CDU entered into the TikTok wildcard. Yeah, the TikTok wildcard, the worst thing that has ever existed. This singer, Betel Akmar, entered into this with the full support of the CDU hierarchy. Betel thanked the leadership for advising her to pursue her Eurovision dream. Obviously, the wildcard was won by Ica Hüftgold, but I don't want to think about that man ever again, so let's move on. Twitter catfishes mirrored in one of the most deranged examples of Eurofan behavior this year, 
a Twitter Eurovision fan posed as a Samaranese journalist to get mirrored to confirm that he was going to try and participate in the Samaranese national selection. And it worked. It actually worked. Is this funny? Yes. Is it also completely mad? Definitely. Next Croatian PM sings Mama Scher on The Masked Singer. For those of you who don't know, The Masked Singer is a fairly standard singing TV show where you vote for your favorites each week. The difference is, is that you don't know who any of the participants are. They're hidden behind terrifying costumes. <laughs> one of these participants in Croatia was the former Prime Minister Jadranka Kosor. And in one week, she sung Mamas Cha. Personally, I think it's a bit ironic that a former Prime Minister would sing a song by a band that is so obviously anti-establishment. But there you go. Mia's bike gets sabotaged. Somebody slashed Mia Nikolai's tires on her bike. Why is this in tier 10? I mean, it's not very nice. Sorry, Mia. I'm sorry you had to go get your bike fixed, but it's also not 10th tier of the iceberg level. So calling out the iceberg on this one. Twin Melody cover art plagiarizes Miraculous. This one, essentially, there were these twins in Benidorm Fest. They didn't make it out of the semi-final, but what they did do is very, very obviously plagiarize the cartoon Miraculous for the cover art of their single. Like, come on guys, this one is not even subtle. You could at least try a little bit to hide it. ESC live blog foot fetish. This one, <sighs> the Eurovision official account ran a live blog during rehearsals. And um, this was to replace the fact that Eurovision press weren't allowed in the press center and it did a terrible job, but I have a chip on my shoulder. So let's just move on quickly. They decided to tell us while describing Dilyal's rehearsal, how much they liked Andrew Lambrew's feet. I know what you guys have been tweeting, and I have to say this probably went down great with a lot of you. However, for me, I would rather hear about the songs than about the man's feet. Elsa Leela drug dealing. This one is actually insane. Thank you again to Yera for helping with this one. Elsa Leela, who won the Albanian national selection, but didn't win the televote, so didn't go to Eurovision, as it turns out, in 2022, was arrested in Italy for being part of an Italian Albanian drugs ring. This included like an Albanian weightlifter, a couple of boxers, and it was all run out of a Italian casino that was managed by Elsa Lila. Intercepted phone conversations revealed that Elsa had actually offered her apartment to somebody who had withdrawn a large amount of money for legal expenses while she was away in order to avoid police control. For legal reasons, I have to say this, Elsa Lila has never been convicted of any crime related to narcotics or otherwise, but this story is wild. <laughs> and now the final, the final item at long last, Romanian national final voting hacks Facebook. A Romanian Eurovision fan alleged after they voted in the Romanian national final, their Facebook account was accessed by a remote place by someone they didn't know. They said that the only thing they had used Facebook for was voting in the Romanian national final. In reality, I think probably this person just used the same password for multiple services. A different service got hacked, leaked somehow, and this person just tried the same username and password on a whole bunch of things and got in to the Facebook. All I'll say is enable two-factor authentication and use different passwords for every service, then this won't happen. With that ends both my cybersecurity lesson and this video. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You have got through two hours of the most bizarre, deranged, crazy things that happened in Eurovision in 2023. These icebergs have been a massive undertaking. The scripts ran to more than 10,000 words in total. Poor Jay is traumatized from all the hours he's had to spend editing. So please, if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, go follow Jay as well. Patreon link is in the description too, if you're feeling generous. We're really excited for 2024. We're gonna be reviewing every single artist and song and telling you a bit more about their background over the next few months. We're gonna be in Finland for UMK. We're gonna be at Eurovision. There's, there's so much happening. You just, you're not gonna wanna miss it. So seriously, hit that subscribe button right now. Yeah, go do it, that one. Yep, great, well done. With that, Thank you so much for watching. I massively appreciate it. Have a brilliant, brilliant new year and see you in a couple weeks.